Hello, welcome Multimedia Pro students to lesson three. Uh, what we're going to do today is create a project right from scratch on our own um, without any help from a digital camera or pictures off the internet. We're just going to create a piece of artwork uh, that is right out of Photoshop. So the first thing that you need to do is push the file menu and click new. And when you do that, you can get a screen that pops up here and we are going to create our new background to work on. So you need to set, make sure you have pixels on the right hand menu, set your width to 800 pixels, your height to 600 pixels, your resolution to 72 pixels, and the background should be white. Once that's set, you can click OK. And there we go. There's our background. I'm just going to zoom in and we are good to go. The first thing we're going to do today is learn how to use the text tool in Photoshop and also how to drop a shadow. So if I click the text tool, uh, I've already got my information set at the top toolbar. So I like Constantia, I'll make it bold and I've got my font set fairly large and I would like my color to be a nice green color. So there we go. Green for Wilson. Okay. And I'll click here and I'll just put some text down. You guys can put down whatever you want. I'm going to put down Multimedia Pro. Now, I want to show you some cool things you can do with text in Photoshop. Remember, anytime you want to move something, it's this top selection tool. Anytime you want to actually change the text, you have to make sure you're on the text layer and click back on the text tool and then go ahead and highlight that text. And here's one cool thing you can do. You can actually bend or move or change the shape. It's called warp text. So click on this guy here and you can see you've got a menu that pops up with a whole bunch of different settings on it. Uh, I really like the fisheye one. And the cool thing about Photoshop is that you have full control over how these things look. Now I like that. You can maybe add some distortion to it. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Let's go the other way. There it is. And click OK. And you can see there, if I click the check mark, we've got something that looks kind of cool. Now, if we want to drop a shadow on this, the best way to do that is to right click on your layer and say duplicate layer. Now, I know in all the Microsoft programs, it makes it really easy to drop a shadow. Uh, but in Photoshop, you have so much more control over what your shadow actually looks like. So you can see I've duplicated my layer because I've got two of them now. And on the new layer, I'm going to go back to my text tool and highlight it. And from there, I'm going to change the color. Maybe I want a nice gray for my text and OK. And now I can take that and move it, drag it on top of my green. Use my arrow keys to move it around. Now I actually would like the green to be in front. So I'll take that, drag it behind, and make it a true shadow. And I can move it with my keys again on the keyboard. And I think that looks pretty good right there. So there's how to create text and to drop a shadow. Now the next thing we're going to do is add a border to Photoshop. The tool you'll use for that is a rectangle tool. There's a ton of ways to do this. I like to use the rectangle tool. Totally up to you guys what you're going to do. Uh, so back on my top menu bar, I'm going to take my fill and I'm going to select the one that says nothing because I don't want to fill. I just want a border around the outside. My stroke then is the color of what the line is going to be around the outside of my text. Um, and I'll just make it one of these various green colors I have here to kind of go along with the theme. And the weight does not have to be huge. And you can see you can set it up to look differently. So I'll go ahead and just draw my line here. There we go. Now that was a little bit thick. I'm going to press Control Z. Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit thinner. Maybe around a 10. Okay. So again, I'm going to click and drag, make myself a nice rectangle. And boom, there you have a border. Now that's pretty plain and simple. So the next thing I want to show is how to use filters. So if I go to the filter menu, so our background is kind of boring right now. We've got just a uh, simple green border on there, but let's use some filters to go ahead and make that cool. My favorite filter is liquify because you can actually customize what it's going to look like with the liquify tool. So make your brush size something a little bit more civil, like maybe 200. And you can actually see that if you click and drag, you're going to change what that border looks like. So maybe I'll suck in these sides like that. Make it look kind of cool. Whooching. There we go. That one goes out. 
uh, and then I can press OK. And you can see there it actually changes the border on my screen. Now there's some other stuff that I can do. Distort makes a pretty big difference on lots of these. So I could twirl this maybe. And I'm just going to zoom out so I can see the whole thing. And if I twirl it like that, you can see it has a pretty funky effect. Ooh, that looks good. Uh, what else could we do? Again, these are all in the filter menu. Now you'll have to rasterize your, your layer before you do this. I've already done that. Uh, and just make sure that you're on the layer you want to actually apply the filters to. So maybe we could do some more distortions, perhaps a sphere eyes. This one we won't see too much of an effect on right now. There we go. Ooh, that's kind of neat. Uh, maybe we should. Put a despeckle on it, despeckle. No, that didn't do anything. How about a blur? Maybe a Gaussian blur. You can see the blurs will really fade out your border. So that's kind of cool. I'll leave it just like that. And there we go. We've got kind of a funky border. Now the next thing we're going to do is the same type of thing we just did with the border, but we'll use shapes for that. In your shapes menu, which is right here where the rectangle is, if you right click on that and pick the custom shape tool, what you'll find is on your top toolbar, you'll see that you've got a bunch of different shapes up here. Now I'm going to pick the snail. If by the way, you don't see very many of these, you can click on the settings button and then select all and say, okay. And now you've got a whole bunch of different shapes that you can use in Photoshop. I'll pick the snail. Uh, and this time I want to use a different color. Maybe I'll make it a hot pink snail. So here we go. I'll draw myself a nice snail just like that. Uh, and we've outlined him, but not filled him. So maybe we'll add a fill color. How about a gray? Boom. There we go. We've got a snail. And I'll leave it like that. I can take my snail. I can move him wherever I want to. And maybe we'll make a second shape. I'd like you guys to use three shapes for me. Uh, what other shape could we use? We could use... Perhaps a fish. That would belong with the snail quite well. Uh, and let's make the fish a different color. Make the fish blue. And we'll make the stroke on the fish. Oh, I changed the snail. Control Z. <coughs> okay, so I've got my fish now. I'll draw it first. There we go. And then I will change the color of the fish and the stroke of the fish. Maybe we'll make it a brown or a black or a gray. Oh, there we go. That's nice. Okay. Now, if I want to make that fish face the snail, I'm just going to go Control-T. And I'm going to hold the Control button and just flop it around. And maybe I can distort it like that. And I'll say Apply. And I can move the fish. And maybe they're talking to each other like that. And I can also apply some filters to the shapes that I've done. So maybe we'll start with the snail. And I'll go Filter. And we could... Maybe we should emboss it. Okay. And let's see. So you can see if I emboss, I can do some cool things here. Ooh, that's a little bit. There we go. Okay. So I've changed my snail around a little bit. Uh, maybe to my fish, I want to go filter. And... Hmm. If you go to Filter Gallery, what it'll come up with is just a whole bunch of different things that you can click on. It's just a really cool way um, that you can see what it's going to look like. Oh, that's cool. Before you do anything. So click OK there. And now my fish is kind of funky. Um, and that's basically it. You guys can experiment and play around with the filters. What I would like from you uh, is at least three different shapes, at least a border, uh, some text with a shadow dropped on it and then apply at least three filters somewhere in your project and just have some fun, be creative, uh, and that's it.